this presentation, we will record journal entries for a new business, recording the first contributions by the owners, by the partners to the partnership. The information will be on the left side. We're going to enter that into the journals, into the general journal and journal format. And then we'll record that to a worksheet so we can see an example of what will, hap what will happen very quickly in terms of the capital accounts and what has been put into the business. So whenever we start the partnership, of course, according to whatever agreement the partners come to, we're going to have to start off with some capital investments, typically uh, to get the business going from the partners. So the most common type of capital investment would be to invest cash. So we're going to have C investing cash into the company, C is the owner. So if we invest 10,000, there's not much uh, confusion there. Of course, cash is going up. We can go through our series of questions. Is cash affected? Yeah, cash is affected. Cash is a debit balance account. It's going to go up. So we're going to do the same thing to it. Another debit. So we'll copy cash, right click on cash and copy. We'll put that up here in uh, B2, right click and paste. One, two, three. The amount then will be 10,000. Then we're going to credit something for 10,000 as well. I'm going to do that with a negative of this number. We could put a, a negative 10,000 but I like that little formula to, to put that in there. That'll be bracketed number. And then what are we gonna credit? Who put the money in? The owner did, C. And that's really uh, what we wanna be able to understand. There's a difference between the capital contribution and the income statement, say. Uh, if this cash had come from a sale, then it would be revenue that would be increasing. But if it comes from the owner, then we're gonna credit the capital and the capital will go up in a similar way as a liability goes up, meaning that the partnership, in a sense, owes the owner. The partnership, of course, owes the owner $10,000 here. That's because the owner just put the $10,000 in. Now, hopefully, the, the owner is going to leave the, that money in there, generate more revenue, and then take money out from the revenue side. That's, that's the point of the investment, of course. So we're going to credit the capital account. We're going to right-click and copy. We're going to put that in B3, right click and paste, one, two, three. So there we have that. And then we can post this. So I'm going to post this here to the cash in the trial balance. I'm in H2. We will say equals point to that 10,000, bringing the balance up from zero by 10,000 to 10,000. We're currently out of balance. So we're going to record the other side, which is C's capital here. Here's C's capital on the trial balance. We are going to be in cell H. Five. Within H5, we will say equals point to that 10,000, bring the balance up from zero by 10,000 in the credit direction to 10,000. So now the, co the company has $10,000, owes that 10,000 to the owner, and the owner is going to leave that money in, look to generate revenue in the future. Note that the no effect is on net income here, even though cash was received, because cash and revenue are different this case cash was received because of not because of a sale but because the owner put the money in so next we're going to have the second owner k contributes cash and the uh, partnership takes over or takes control of the accounts payable so uh, related to k so now the partnership is taking responsibility of a liability in this case so we still have cash going up so cash is going to go up so we're going to say copy cash a debit balance we're going to put that on top right click and paste one two three the cash going in is fourteen thousand then we're going to have a liability that the partnership's going to assume the liability of the accounts payable so uh, we're going to put that on the books we're going to right click and copy that and we'll put that in b6 right click and paste one two three and then we're going to put the credit of in this case two thousand because it's a liability account, we need to increase it. The, the partnership is incurring more liability or taking on this liability. Therefore, we do the same thing to it, another credit. And then the difference will then go to the capital account. So we're gonna have K's capital account here. We'll right click on that, copy, and put that in B7, right click and paste one, two, three. Let's try that, oh, there it goes. Okay, so then we need the amount, and the amount is going to be the difference between the 14 and the 2. We'll do that with our negative sum function. So I'm going to put my cursor in D7. We'll say negative S-U-M 
double click the sum function and highlight those cells to give us 12,000. Again, it's 14,000 minus 2,000, of course, 12,000, so that the 12,000 credits and the 2,000 credits is equivalent to the 14,000 debit. Now, note what happens here that uh, the, the, the cash going into the company, clearly it would make sense that then we would, we would be uh, giving the cash back to the owner who put the cash in the company. The accounts payable, it starts to get a little bit tricky because note that the owner K in and of themselves um, had was solely responsible for the accounts payable here. Now when it, when it goes into the partnership, what happens is now who, all the partners are responsible. So it kind of deludes in some way the, the amount of responsibility that K has for that payable personally. And so when we get into the agreement in terms of what the partnership is going to take on in terms of cash and things like a, a liability investments into the partnership, that's going to be a, a negotiation process between the partners. So there's no, it doesn't have to be an alignment. Note that the profit sharing is a 3-2-1 split here. Doesn't have to be aligned here. The investments don't have to align with the profit sharing. It's just whatever whatever the partnership agrees on. The, pro the profit sharing is going to be what, how much of the profit is going to be allocated to the partnership. Doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the initial investments from the owners to the partnerships. It may, they may have, you know, used, used the initial investments to then come up with the profit sharing uh, split or percentage, but there could be a lot of other factors involved in, in that decision-making process as well. So uh, the last one we're gonna say contribute to equipment uh, with an agreed value of 15,000. So we're gonna say equipment now is going into the business. So I'm gonna right click and copy the equipment. We'll put that in B9, right click and paste one, two, three. And then that's gonna go on for 15,000. Now note that the equipment then as well, if it's owned by the owner, we don't really know what the market value is per se because we wouldn't know unless we sold it. So we can get a we can get an average of the market value. We're not typically going to take the book value from the owner unless it's unless it's close to the market value or we agree upon it. Again, it's it's really determined on what we agree upon uh, when we put this information, this equipment into the partnership. Uh, what do the partners agree this equipment is worth, and therefore what are we going to allocate to the partnership? So it's kind of like starting over, starting new within the partnership. We don't typically take on any accumulated depreciation, we typically put it on the books as of as if it was basically purchased in this time period. And in a way, it's a similar type of agreement because the other two partners are negotiating, kind of like if we had a market force to have whatever price they think is reasonable as part of the contribution to the partnership. And so if they agree on 15,000, then they're gonna owe back to the owner 15,000 credit. So that's gonna go into the capital account. So that's gonna be M's Capital. So we'll right click on M's Capital and put that in B10, right click and paste one, two, three. So now I'm gonna record these two. I didn't record <laughs> this last one. So we're gonna go up to see, up the cash here. Cash is a debit balance account. So we're gonna go, there's something in it already. So we'll double click on it, go to the end of it and say plus then point to that 14,000, bringing that 10,000 up by 14,000 to 24,000. Then we've got the accounts payable 2,000. We'll go here in H4, where we will say equals, and point to that 2,000, bringing the balance up from zero by 2,000 to 2,000. Then we've got K's capital account. K's capital account here. We are in H6, where we will say equals, scroll over to the 12,000 credit, bringing that zero up by 12,000 to 12,000 credit. So that, that represents that we okay back 12,000 here. And again, he hopes or she hopes or they hope that it's going to increase revenue and then we'll get draws in the future for this initial investment. And then the equipment uh, for this last journal entry, equipment here, it's gonna be posted here to the trial balance. So we are in H3 where we say equals point to that 15,000 and enter. So we're up 15,000 on equipment and then the capital count is gonna be returned. So we're here on um, H7 
equals, and we'll point to that capital account bringing that up to 15,000. So there we have it. Now we can see uh, we have a trial balance. Nothing's on the income statement. It kind of looks kind of like a post-closing trial balance because we don't have any activity yet, meaning there are no temporary accounts here. It's all permanent accounts. They're all balance sheet accounts. And we can see then that the assets here of this and this minus the liability add up to 37,000. And it's all owed to the owner in this format, which adds up to 37,000. That's the accounting equation uh, in action here. So assets minus liabilities, the top half of this trial balance, is equivalent to 37,000 to the bottom half, the equity, 37,000. We have the added complication in a partnership to break out that equity to who is owed, uh, which owner is owed. And note the relationship and the similarity between the liability and the, the uh, capital accounts. If you think of the business as separate from the owners, they're very similar because the business is a separate entity. If you think of the business as just its own thing, then the partnership owes some third party $2,000 and the partnership owes the owners $10,000, $12,000 and $15,000 for C, K and M respectively.